he knew there was something wrong with his tax affairs. Now, I, I, I think most people not in Westminster will think that's not the way anyone should behave and certainly not the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Questions continue to swirl around Nadim Zahawi in a settlement with HMRC over unpaid tax. Who knew about it? How long for? How big a penalty did he have to pay? Zahawi, who's the Conservative Party chairman, did release a statement over the weekend saying it was careless and not deliberate in terms of the error. But cr critics say more transparency is needed. For Caroline Slocock, former private secretary to Margaret Thatcher and director of the Civil Exchange, there's enough here for, Nadam, for Nadim Zahawi to be given the slip. I mean, he'll have to do a bit of reshuffling, won't he? Because, you know, Nadim Zahawi is a minister um, and as well as being chairman. And uh, so, you know, some reshuffling will happen. Um, I don't know, but I think I, my view is, you know, as somebody who's been around the political world for a while, uh, is that Nadim Zahawi is not going to last. Well, we shall see uh, what's going to happen. Let's speak to Dan Needle now, who is the founder of Tax Policy Associates and the person who first flagged irregularities in Nadim Zahawi's tax filings. Um, you're barely off the airwaves these days, Dan. We're very, very grateful to speak to you again. Morning to you. Morning. I'm keen to go back to a life of nerdish tax policy <laughs> that hardly anyone reads, but a few days more of this, I think. A few days. Um so let's catch up with, with the stuff over the weekend. Uh, this was a careless and not deliberate error. What do you think? Sounds like he thinks he should win a prize for that. If it's deliberate, that means it's tax fraud and you potentially go to jail. Mm. So for H. Motti to conclude it's not, it, it isn't the greatest win. Yet careless has a, has a particular meaning in tax. So lots of people get their taxes wrong. Tax is really complicated. They mm. hire people like me when I was in practice to try and settle it with HMRC. Sometimes the taxpayer was right, sometimes the taxpayer was wrong, but those guys don't pay a penalty. You're allowed to be wrong. Careless means something specific. It means you either didn't get advice, didn't follow the advice, or you didn't tell the truth to your advisors, or maybe you didn't look at the return they submitted. Mm. So, if Sahawi says HMOC concluded he was careless, it means he did one of those things. Which one was it? Mm. Well, let's see whether we get any uh, uh, any uh, any further on that. Um, I, I know this probably won't exercise you that much because, you know, your, your thing is tax as opposed to politics. But do you think it matters more that all of this might have happened while he was actually in charge of everyone's finances and he was a chancellor? I, I think it matters for a couple of reasons. One is that it destroys faith in the tax system. There's nothing more toxic than people thinking there's one rule for them and one for us. Mm. And when someone's struggling with their tax return, probably about now, yes. and for finding the money to pay it, to think that the man in charge of the tax system was careless, perhaps as to 27 million of income he didn't declare, that's just toxic for the tax system and the way people view it. Mm. Um, we spoke to Bob Seeley MP uh, for the uh, Isle of Wight and he was saying that, you know, there's nothing to see here. This has all been settled now. This is a Westminster story. It's coming from Labour who've got no policies and don't know how to define a woman. And we really just need to, you know, move on and concentrate on the big things right now. Strikes, war in Ukraine, cost of energy, cost of living. Well... I, I'm not in Westminster, I'm in Norfolk. And I was in Norfolk when Mr Sahawi threatened to sue me for reporting on this mm. and making claims about it that he didn't like. He demanded I retract my claims, said if I didn't, I'd receive an open letter, which is lawyer code for I'll sue you, and said I wasn't even allowed to mention the fact he'd sent me that, that communication. Mm. So I had to sit down with my wife and discuss whether we were ready to proceed on a path, which if all went wrong, could end up with, I don't know, two million pounds of uh, of court awards and costs to, to two million pounds mm. and we decided to go ahead and it turns out now that at the same time around the same time he was sending those legal threats to me and to other people he knew there was something wrong with his tax affairs now i i, I think most people not in westminster will think that's not the way anyone should behave and certainly not the chancellor of the exchequer do you think, though, and I'm playing devil's advocate, obviously, here, that rich people do things in a different way? They have so much money, you know, hundreds and millions of, of millions sometimes, mm -hmm. that they they employ um, tax advisors, accountants, whatever, to put their money through different schemes so that they won't have to pay the, 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 uh, pay tax the way that 
everyone else does because we are talking about, you know, just different levels of tax. Do we have to accept, as much as it might stick in our throat through probity or envy or whatever it might be, that some people, that people, rich people do things differently? Well, it doesn't look like this was a tax avoidance scheme. It looks like he just didn't pay tax that was due. So I think it's a different category right. kind of thing to discuss. Yeah. But also I think it's wrong to say that everyone does it. So let's take Jeremy Hunt. Mm -hmm. Lots of people said I should look at Jeremy Hunt and how he disposed of his holdings in an education company. And um, they thought he avoided tax on that. And I looked and it was clear to me that he didn't. Mm -hmm. He made a lot of money, I think about 15 million pounds. Uh, I guess he could have held his shares offshore. He could have bought into some elaborate scheme. He, he, he could have split the shares with, with someone else. There were things he could have done to avoid tax. He didn't do any of that. I, I am really confident he paid the tax that was due. Mm. And that's what most people do. Well, that's good to hear. Um, finally, uh, is there anyone else that um, that you're looking into their, their tax affairs or, or or is that it for now? This isn't what Tax, tax Policy Associates Focus is, mm. but I, I have recently looked at the tax affairs of another member of parliament where there is reason to think they may have received income and not paid tax on it. And that the the story originates with with, with, with a with, with a rather wonderful journalist, um, and m my involvement was really just as a hired hand quite, quite late on in the process. So I I, I can't I, I can't take the credit for this one. But yes, there is another story there, and it will be coming out quite soon. Oh, soon, like when? Um, I think the next few days. I should say, not a cabinet minister, not a conservative, but you'll understand. I don't, I don't want to say who it is right now. Right. Okay. Uh, Dan, thank you for that. That's Dan Needle, founder of Tax Policy Associates. It's really interesting. The whole story behind the story of all of that, and interesting about Jeremy Hunt uh, mm -hmm. uh, as yeah. well.